Okay, here's an abutment crown on tooth number nine that was sent in to uh, look at. And so at this point of the case, the doctor's already split the case into an abutment and a crown. You can see because it's tooth number nine and it says nine dash nine. So here we can look at the design of the crown. It looks pretty good. Uh, if we go ahead and throw up the gingiva, you can see that there is a big gingival zenith discrepancy. And, uh, but other than that, it looks pretty good. We can go ahead and check the abutment. So I just move my cursor down. It shows up the, the abutment crown and the abutment. We'll click on the abutment to see what this looks like. And that looks good as well. Um, one of the things I would say is even though your tissue is, uh, is low in comparison to the zenith of the other teeth, I probably would still put it more subgingival and I probably honestly would decrease the shoulder thickness. Okay, so if we go ahead and we turn this uh, transparent, you can see we actually have got some room to use our, our, our scale tool and scale that down a little bit on the lingual. So, and I'll show that to you. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed in this case is I, I think the design is actually very good. You know, there's always room for improvement uh, with line angles and things like that. And it looks a little bit wider than the other tooth. Uh, but overall, looks 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 pretty good. But I know from looking at your uh, model that it was probably uh, pretty difficult to get there. So we'll go through some tips to uh, make this design much easier. So why don't I go ahead and unsplit this restoration. To unsplit it, you just simply right click, hit unsplit, and then you're back to your biogeneric crown. Okay, so if I back up to the model, I'm looking at the margin you drew on the scan step. And this is the problem where I, I, I figure that it was a little bit difficult for you and your proposal is bad because this margin's not drawn correctly. So if I go back to your design and let me just simply recalculate this to, to kind of get an idea what your initial proposal was, and my guess is it was not too good on the buckle or the facial. Okay, so there's your initial proposal, and as I thought, uh, that buckle's way out there because you drew the line uh, too far out. So let's go ahead and just simply redraw that line to, to make this a little bit easier for you. So let's go back to the model. You've already clicked on the scan body head. I'm just going to go ahead and reset that. We'll retrim. I've already looked in your administration. You did a perfect job calling it the right thing. We'll click on the scan body head. We are going to use the gingiva mask. And so this, it looks like you just kept what you had. Well, oftentimes, since this is basically designating where the split line is going to be, I like to split pretty much where the tissue's at. So I would just go ahead and trace the tissue right around the zenith of that tissue. Okay? Something like that. Okay, well, I'm just noticing that you use biogeneric reference. Um, I'm not a big fan of biogeneric reference. It certainly works, but I think it actually sometimes works better if you just use straight biogeneric. So I'm going to go back to administration. I'm going to edit this. We're going to choose abutment, biogeneric, individ biogeneric individual, multi-layer, re-choose the tooth, hit OK, and we can go ahead and move back to the model. Okay, so now we we just we can we can edit that and we can maintain the margin line that we drew. We'll check our insertion axis. Implants a little bit angled, so um, let's go ahead and just switch that. It's it's pretty good though. So I think we can have the angulation of our abutment to be pretty darn close to what the angulation of the implant is. So I'm okay with uh, having that straight angulation. We'll hit OK, and we'll move on to our parameters. I'm not going to really pay overly amount of, uh, too much attention to these. Um, with my occlusal offset on anteriors, I don't go down too much. Uh, these all look good to me. Uh, on the bottom layer, I'm going to keep the gingival depth split line just right at the gingiva. I have no issue with that. I am going to put just a little bit of pressure on the gingiva, maybe 200, and I'm going to keep my shoulder width down at 500 for now. Let's do that and see what our proposal gives us. 
Okay, and here is my initial proposal. So it's still not perfect by any means, to be honest with you, but you can see, at least when I put that gingiva up here, we don't have the same exact problem that we did before. Um, as far as these anteriors, I'm kind of, I'm really, this, I could easily make this work, but I, but I tell you what, doing this unadapted recalculation has really worked out nice. Um, <coughs> excuse me, if I can just simply do this, you can move it into place, we can just use the position and the rotate to get this restoration kind of where we want it to be. It's, it's really worked out much quicker just doing it this way than trying to mess around with the actual proposal. So I just kind of get it in, you know, roughly in position. I might go ahead and use the dimension tool as well. We'll do it mesial distally to get those areas closed. I might even do it a little bit buckle lingually and uh, go ahead and recalculate it from there to see what I get. Okay, my proposal is much better here um, and, and it gives me something much easier to work with. So I'm not going to go through the whole design, but I'll show you the final one. So just go ahead. At this point, I probably would usually use uh, my circular and anatomical shape tool. Uh, what I want to do is I want to form a nice smooth emergence profile and get all the contacts formed to the tissue. Okay, so here is my final design. Uh, a couple things that I want to point out. Um, you know, it's, it, you guys know how to design anteriors. You just you line up the edges. But with abutments and anteriors in general, notice how much thinner or, or less wide uh, my restoration is. I'm able to maintain the emergence profile and the line angles here without stretching these over uh, to try to close the black triangles. You never ever close the black triangles from the facial surface. You want to maintain that emergence and the line angle with the cervical bulge there always close it with the lingual. So just grab your circular shape tool and close it from the lingual back here so you can prevent the boxiness up in here. You, know, you want, uh, that's, that's the biggest mistake that most CEREC doctors do is they get boxiness up in the front here and the teeth look too wide. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. The second thing is, I'll go ahead and turn the gingiva off notice my emergence profile. I don't have any lips. I'm just pretending this is a root form so I want to make that completely smooth. If I turn off the trim model, notice all the way around how I've just got a uniform smoothness from that titanium base all the way up. There's no lips so the tissue will just shrink right up against this. So that's kind of what you want to do. Uh, so at this point once your design is finished you can right click and click split restoration. The split line is going to come up I usually never manually change that. You can check to see where it's at in relation to the gingiva. It's a little high. We'll fix that in a minute. And we'll go ahead and we'll split the restoration. And there we go. So that actually is a very nice split. Notice that my margin is, is much less thick, but I like it that way. I don't want a thick margin because it's going to be subgingival. Obviously, I don't have a lot of room up here. So we're going to right click, hit the scale tool, Hit scale occlusal, scale hole. Let's bring down this incisal edge. Okay, that's plenty. The next thing that we're going to do is turn on our gingiva. We're going to click off scale hole to just scale an area, and we'll start scaling this subgingival. Okay, I got a little bit of a thin spot, which we'll fix in a minute. If we want to turn this transparent, we can just to see where we're at with these margins. Get them about a half a millimeter subgingival is usually perfect. Okay, now to fix that, we'll just go to radial and we'll increase the thickness right in that area. So there you go. There is your abutment for this anterior tooth. We can go ahead and mill those both and we'll be on our way. Hope that helped.